Hello, and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 2093, the topic is nutrition, and the title is Food Substitutions for Meal Plans. One of my clients is a personal trainer. Actually, over half of my clients are personal trainers, which is super duper fun. And I'm teaching them nutrition coaching for their clients. They said the following in a recent uh, journal article. I typically send my clients a nutrition program with specific foods and macronutrients. For example, 1600 calorie meal plan with three meals providing 40 grams of protein per meal. And then they have the specific meals. Uh, so breakfast is 500 calories, 40 grams of protein. It's an omelet. And it tells them like three or three large eggs, three ounces grilled chicken, quarter cup shredded low fat cheese, one cup sauteed spinach. And then you can have a slice of whole wheat bread. I won't go through the entire program. But <laughs> um, that's how they have it set up. So it's an individual uh, kind of meal plan. Well, it's actually not an individual meal plan. It's 1,600-calorie meal plan with three meals, 40 grams each. So what they do is they have a client, okay, this client, based on their weight, their activity, probably going to need around 1,600 calories. So they give them a specific 1,600-calorie meal plan. And their schedule allows for X number of meals. So they have three meals for this client. They want to get to at least 120 grams of protein based on body weight and activity level. So the nutrition program is personalized-ish in the sense that the calories are correct for that person, meal frequency is correct for that person, protein is correct for that person. Um, they will add any details to the plan as in, um, you know, is does it need to be dairy-free? Does it need to have, you know, gluten-free? They'll add that. Uh, how they do it is they actually just use chat GPT. <laughs> uh, this is one of a uh, trainer's little uh, shortcuts. So they'll go ahead and use chat GPT for that. And then they said, my clients will follow this for like a day <laughs> before they tell me they want more options. I typically use ChatGPT to write more options, but then they get tired of those options and the cycle continues. How do you write nutrition plans that allow for food substitutions so you don't have to keep writing specific meal ideas? Okay, so this is a common practice for most trainers I talk to when they don't really know nutrition well. They will use ChatGPT, get a specific meal plan, and say, hey, eat these meals. The client then does their best to try to stick to those few foods. However, life is crazy. They travel, um, you know, different scheduling. Just stuff happens. You get tired of eating eggs every morning. There's a lot of variety in life that then leads to the need for variety in your diet. So with my clients, I give them the macronutrient targets. I give them the calories, the protein uh, they should have through per day, but I give them two in ranges. So for example, if a client is supposed to have around 1,600 calories, I might give them a range. If they're pretty good with tracking, I'll give them a range of 1,500 to 1,700, so just plus or minus 100. If they're not that great at tracking, I might give them uh, like uh, 150 plus or minus, so it's more of a 300 calorie range. It also depends on the amount of calories the person is eating. So if they're a 3,000 plus calorie client, I might have them have a range of say 3,000 to 3,400, so a 400 calorie range is totally fine at that calorie level. However, if somebody's only eating 1,600 calories, you can't really afford a 400 calorie uh, range. But that is how I do it, is I give them ranges uh, for calories and protein. And then we talk about distribution. So those are the three main things that I have my clients track and kind of pay attention to. I'll then start with a few specific meals, but I give them freedom to make up whatever meals they want and substitute foods however they want. So I like them having to come up with their own meal substitutions and food substitutions because it teaches lifelong skills of how to do that. Uh, this is going to teach them how to manage their nutrition for the rest of their life. The way in which we manage distribution is very helpful for making meal substitutions and food substitutions easier. We do distribution by six hour time blocks. So we typically sleep six to eight hours a day. That means we're awake for 16 to 18 hours a day. I chunk that up into three parts of the day. So the first six hours of being awake, the second six hours of being awake, then the final whatever hours of being awake. Does it have to be six? Can it be five? Sure. But around five or six-ish.
So every five or six hours, they should be having a third of their calories and a third of their protein. So for that client, uh, per six hours, if their goal was 1,600 calories, they'd have roughly 500, 600 calories per six hours. If their goal is 120 grams of protein, it'd be roughly about 40 grams of protein per six hours. So that's really the goal is per six hours, they're looking for 500 to 600 calories and around 40 grams of protein. Per six hours, those numbers can come from one meal or they can come from multiple meals. It really doesn't matter. So maybe it's a breakfast and a small snack. Maybe it's just a big lunch. Maybe it's just a big dinner. Totally fine. Doesn't matter. I also give them a list of healthy food choices based on macronutrient category. So foods that are predominantly high in fat, that's going to be avocado, butter, cheese, fatty meats, uh, nut butters, nuts, oils, whole eggs. Uh, foods that are predominantly high in carbs, you're looking at breads, bagels, wraps, cereals, oats, oatmeal, pasta, potato. Protein bars actually have more carbs usually than protein. Uh, rice and vegetables. And then protein foods are like cottage cheese, egg whites, fish, seafood, Greek yogurt, meat, protein powders, toast. And then there are secondary protein sources we use for vegans and vegetarians, which would be like beans and nuts and uh, vegan protein uh, powders and whatnot. So that list is good for them because I also give them a basic meal structure that they should kind of follow. Uh, a basic meal structure is you should have a protein providing food. So something that has protein in it, the amount of protein that you need, and that can come up from one food or two foods or whatever. You're then going to also want something that provides energy, which is carbs and or fats, and then something that provides volume. So each meal should contain a food item that provides protein and a source of energy, which would come from carbs and fats. The list that I, I gave is... Uh, helps them kind of pick and choose that they now know which foods are more protein foods and which foods are more car foods are more carb foods and which foods are more fat based foods the combination of protein plus fats and carbs they can come from a single food source so think if you get uh, like a steak you're going to get fats and protein from the steak or it can come from multiple food sources think of like chicken and rice yeah you know, if you want the carbs you're going to get lean chicken so chicken breast is just protein the rice is going to be your carbs and that is a multiple food meal that gives you your protein plus your energy and then uh, you can add volume by just adding low calorie vegetables so if you want a larger meal add more vegetables if you want a smaller meal don't <laughs> uh, then we'll also share supporting podcasts with them and that helps them kind of pick what foods are best and how to make a good meal the final thing I do is I list a uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack ideas to help generate ideas, but they don't actually have portions to them. It's just a list of, like, say, like overnight oats that would contain oats, protein powder. Uh, maybe you're going to put some peanut butter in there. Uh, so it just gives you an idea of like what to put in it. And then they have to figure it out, like their portion sizes based on that. So I have them track what they eat in a nutrition tracking app. They can then see what's in their foods and then learn how to manipulate portions and food choices so that way they can hit their per six hour macro targets. So I give them a few meals to start with. I give them a ton of information then to learn how to manipulate and make changes on their own. Now, the catch to this is I give weekly feedback to my clients. So I'll look into their nutrition tracking app, see what they're doing, and give them suggestions on each day each meal if needed to help them learn the process my work the way in which i do this is time intensive on the front end but then as they learn what to do on their own uh, they kind of take it run with it and they either don't need me or they just have sporadic questions from time to time or they dive deeper and deeper and deeper into the nuances of food uh, as their goals progress and maybe their uh, what they want to accomplish starts to progress and become more detailed and more advanced so my work is really more ongoing rather than a, well, hey, I'll just ask ChatGPT, hand you a program, and then expect it to all go well. <laughs> it typically doesn't. So when we're making food substitutions, what we're essentially going to look for is we have to match the calories of whatever we're substituting. So if I'm taking you know, four, 300 calories of rice out of a meal because I don't feel like eating rice, I have to put 300 calories worth of something back in. Now, the basic way of looking at that is just calories. So if it's 300 calories rice, I want to put 300 of something in. 
The next layer would be is looking at the macronutrient source. So if I'm substituting out rice, that's a carb-based food. It's predominantly carbohydrates. So I would want to substitute in predominantly carbohydrates if I'm looking to match that meal in regards to digestion rate. If I take out a protein item, I have to make sure I replace it with protein. So I can't take a protein item out and put more carbs in. I can't take uh, carbs out and put more protein in. That's going to jack up my, my percentages. Now, I can substitute carbs and fats. I can substitute them completely, or I can have partial mixtures of those two. And it really depends on the digestion rate that I need at that meal. If I'm eating this meal and it's only going to be three hours to my next meal, I probably want to eat something that digests quickly, which is typically going to be carbohydrates. If I have a five or six or seven hour time block between two meals, I want something that digests slowly, which is typically going to be more fats. So maybe you're supposed to have chicken and rice, but you're like, oh my gosh, I'm, there's no way I'm going to have another meal based on my schedule for seven hours. I'm probably going to substitute out the chicken and rice for something with more fats. I'm going to make sure it has the protein I need, but also more fats. That is essentially what we have to think of when we're making food substitutions. Am I matching the calories and am I matching the macronutrient source of the food I'm substituting out? Then, am I changing the digestion rate in a good way or bad way? And then we would look at meal volume. Am I making this meal too large and I'm not going to want to eat it? Am I making it too small and I'm going to be too hungry too quickly? These are trial and error things. You know, calories and protein, we can kind of know ahead, like we know that as we're doing it. The substituting energy sources is going to be more of a kind of figuring it out as you go, figure out how it feels. And then if we look at substituting meal volume, that's also going to be a kind of like figure it out as you go type thing. You're going to try something, it's going to go well or it's not, and then you make a note of that, and if it went well, you repeat it. If it didn't, you don't. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this also is super, 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 super helpful, very important, because it teaches you how to just work with what you have around you. You know, if you go to a work event and all they have at lunch is just a bunch of random food you never eat, you'll know how to substitute it because you now know what protein foods are, what carb and, and fat-based foods are. You'll be able to replace, hey, I know a typical portion of my chicken is this, so if I'm going to substitute out, out with fish, I want typically the same size, the same portion, but make sure I'm, I'm substituting a protein for a protein, a carb for a carb, or a fat for a fat. So that is basically how I manage food substitutions for meal plans. I, I don't give clients a singular meal plan and then don't expect them to be able to make substitutions. Like I want them to be able to make substitutions, but I want them to make them on their own. So I empower them with a lot of information and then an enormous amount of feedback that's every single week in a Google Doc. So they can write in it 24-7. I answer every single week and we discuss the changes, what went good or bad, and then they learn over time. So two podcasts that I would suggest you check out if you want to learn more about this process. Podcast 1925, it's a nutrition podcast titled Matching Food Digestion Rates with Meal Timing. That way you know if you're substituting carbs and fats, how, how that changes the digestion rate of the meal based on when you need your next meal. So that's very helpful. And podcast 861 is a nutrition podcast titled Meal Comparisons, What Makes a Good Meal good. And that's a really good podcast. <laughs> you can find older podcasts by going to our website www.brutalirongym.com Scroll down on the homepage, there's a podcast player there that goes back 300 episodes but underneath it are instructions on how to find even older episodes. So I hope this was helpful. I thought it was a fun discussion with that trainer and, and hopefully made a an interesting podcast and gave you some food <laughs> for thought. <laughs> if you have any questions, if you need anything, just reach out on our website. We have a Contact Us page on the website. It's www.brittleirongym.com. If you like the podcast, please share the podcast. If you like the podcast you can also consider donating to support the podcast which is great and then if you like the information we share in the podcast you can find more from us on our social media channels you can find us and follow us on instagram and youtube under the name brutal iron gym as always i hope this was helpful and thank you for listening